This is the story, start to finish, of how we purchased this dumpy Airstream and turned it into our dreamy, tiny home on wheels in just 60 days without any prior building experience. Let's go back in time to December of 2020, during the height of the pandemic, when we found ourselves needing to find an alternative living option. With our desire to make full-time adventure possible, we were in the market for a home that was small, affordable, and mobile. So our search for our tiny home on wheels began. Whilst perusing endless listings for vans, trailers, and buses, we came across this 1968 Airstream Overlander. Well, this is it. This is the Airstream. We set up a viewing and we were enamored by her, despite how dodgy she looked at the time. Upon obvious inspection, she had numerous issues. I believe that's the good black mold. $8,000 worth of mold in here. It's a microbiologist nightmare. Clearly some rats have been in here at some point. They've eaten the wires here. They've also chewed up all the insulation around the hot water tank. Water damage here. She was leaking. Squishy rotten floor. Hopefully this is the only spot where this exists, but Airstreams, they all leak. So chances are there are situations like this everywhere I'm here covered as we haul things out of here. The utility systems were pretty well non-functional. The propane was disconnected, the plumbing would need to be replaced for obvious sanitary reasons. Well, that water smells like shit. The electrical would also need to be entirely replaced since the original wires were made from aluminum. The body was in pretty good condition but would need a few patch jobs and she definitely needed new tires. Not to mention that the overall layout really didn't meet our lifestyle needs. But we were big dreamers, and we had a pretty romantic vision for what this caravan could become. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm gonna get rid of the lime green, paint it all nice and neat, put in a new floor, new counters. Don't know what we're really gonna be doing in here yet, actually. It's all a work in progress. We're currently just waiting for my mate to turn up. He's uh, kindly volunteered to help me move the trailer. He's gonna move it over to his place and we'll get stuck into ripping her apart over there. It was here that we would spend the next 60 days rebuilding her. To most people, this hunk of aluminum was a dump. So what were we thinking? Here are some of the things that we did appreciate about her. We like her curves. <laughs> this model of Airstream was from a pretty fun era, evidenced by the snippets of mustard shag carpet. Back in 1968, our Airstream would have had heated floors, one of the first color TVs Watch TV on the road. and a cigarette lighter in the powder room so you could enjoy a smoke in the bath. The 1960s trailers had some of the bigger windows in all of the models, so we're really happy about that. This vintage gal had an interesting story. She had lived an adventurous life and had taken her previous owners up and down North America. Despite being 50 years old, she had good bones. Because they're made from aluminum, the body of Airstreams don't deteriorate. They basically last indefinitely, and their value maintains over time. Airstreams are a classic. We figured it was worth the money. $8,000 well spent. And they're just cool and groovy. We just love Airstreams. Let us know in the comments if you're also an Airstream fan. Originally, we were going to keep some of the existing cabinetry and take out what wasn't working for us in order to make this livable in 60 days. Or we just get rid of everything and start fresh. Everything's gotta come out. It's gonna be fun. Awesome, I think it's yeah. gonna feel really good. Ripping I'm, things apart is super fun. I'm really stoked to get right. in here with the hammer. And Rip shit up! Let's do it, let's get the hammers. <laughs> All right, let's do it. What are we destroying first? <laughs> is the gas disconnected? Oh yeah. Now, the it was obvious that it was going to be a lot of work. 
But as we dug in further, we quickly began to realize that we may have acquired more than we bargained for. Need a bigger hammer. And that, my friends, is the big pile of stuff that we tore out. One thing remains. Deconstruction was satisfying and only took two days. So we were feeling pretty optimistic at this point. We found some interesting and disgusting things. That's gross. That's gross, gross. Got some 60s vinyl here. Mushrooms living in the walls. Exotic pests. It's a mud wasp nest. I guess you don't have these in Canada. You can see that's the little cocoon <sighs> where the larvae grow. And then they're wasp inside here, and then when they hatch, they climb through these holes and fly away. Now they're unleashed into Canada. I think we finally found the culprit of all the chewed electrical wires. We uncovered five decades of dirt and grime behind the cabinetry. Oh, yeah. Ugh. And found more areas of rotten subfloor. To solve the subfloor issues, we reinforced it with laminated plywood. This would be a fine solution for the next decade of our Airstream's lifetime. Stripping the interior walls back to the original panels or skins was the next big phase of our Airstream rebuild. Here we encountered another challenge. That paint is not on there very good. No, it comes, just comes straight off like that, don't it? Underneath all that paint was a notoriously troublesome coating of vinyl plastic. This coating would have to go for us to be able to properly paint the interior walls. So began a three-day sanding marathon. While I was at work, James single-handedly sanded from sun up to sun down and well into the night, totaling 22 hours of shoulder-destroying, wrist-vibrating, nostril-filling, itchy-eyed sanding. This would be one of the most painstaking jobs of the entire build. In the end, the primer stuck, and the feeling of applying that final coat of creamy white paint made it all worth it in the end. With a fresh coat of paint, we felt like we had transformed the space overnight, and we were finally starting to feel like this Airstream was coming back to life. We were really excited about the next phase of the restoration. We were finally starting the process of rebuilding. Here was our next big challenge, erecting walls. Making walls straight level and plumb is difficult at the best of times, but it was especially challenging for us novice carpenters in a curved space that wasn't on level ground. Now we, need to level the we did our best using basic geometry and the tools we had available. I cut this stick that's gonna be square to the wall in multiple places throughout. Remembering that the walls are not structural, serving only to house our electrical and plumbing and provide a bit of privacy when you're in the loo. 
You can still reach through and pass me toilet paper. Thank you. So the framing's done. It's all secured. It's pretty well square. I think it's about as good as it's gonna get. When you shoot a line of a sight down the trailer, it all seems to line up reasonably well. Couldn't be happier. Except for the middle one. The middle one doesn't. We might have to change that. Equally as difficult to building straight walls was skinning them. Enter scribing. A theoretically simple process, which turned out to be very, very tedious. That's really good. It's your first time ever doing this. Do you need a hand? Trying to get the bit of plywood cut to the exact radius, and it's just a really long process. Simply put, you take a pencil, and you create a spacer, a block of wood, a washer, anything that is slightly wider than the widest gap between your working edge and the surface that you are scribing to. You then trace a line onto your workpiece and remove the excess material below that line. You check the fit, scribe again, and repeat until your wall exactly matches the radius of your airstream. Oh, come on. That's pretty bloody good. Can't be complaining about that for the first cut. I think it might be the final cut. Around this time, winter finally arrived. And without a workshop, things really started to get difficult. But we powered on. Next up was cabinetry and countertops. We wanted our cabinetry to fit perfectly with the space and our lifestyle. So we custom built every component. To make our cabinet faceplates, we rigged up the DIY CNC machine, basically a router tool. And it took us all day to make a plywood stencil. Way to go, yeah. bud. We also got crafty making 15 feet of beautiful countertops from a single slab of walnut. The countertop project really got us excited. The grain of each piece of wood is unique, with its own character, color, and texture. So we had fun arranging them all and getting creative. Although overwhelming at times, Doing and making everything ourselves really created a sense of pride. There's something so special about living in a home that you have built with your own two hands. Concurrently with the cabinetry and countertops, we installed the utilities that would bring us power, water, and propane. Our challenge was to install these systems without having them be visible. So we rooted these systems underneath the baseboards, snaking power and water lines out of sight around the perimeter of the airstream. At this point, we've pretty well got most of the water system installed. They're all tied down nice and neatly. They run through the pump. We're all going all under the counter and we're about to install the water tank down the front. And we're excited to have some hot, hot water washer. on demand. It's going to be awesome. Because James and I have been living for the last... 18, 18 months 18 without months. hot water. We've been boiling little kettles on the stove just so I can wash my armpits. <laughs> hot water is going to be such a luxurious upgrade. Testing the systems for the first time was nerve-wracking. We're going to do it. Go turn on that water. Let's see. All right. They don't feel wet. I can't see any leaks anywhere and it's all pressurized, so. Are you impressed with yourself? I was expecting every single one to leak. <laughs> That's pretty cool. You know how running water. That's really impressive, babe. I'm so proud of you. Well, it makes me excited because it means that we can finally just close up these walls for good. Yeah, and we're gonna be able to shower. Finally, yeah. good teamwork. Thanks. Having never installed electrical or propane, it was a huge learning curve. Expensive mistake. It's the first time you've ever done this. Naturally, there is a learning curve. With countless hours spent researching to ensure we were doing it all correctly. 
is allegedly how you meant to do it. Could someone give me a call about this? I don't want to kill myself. But nothing's plugged in yet, so there's no current in any of the wires, so no chance of getting electrocuted just yet. So my friends, do I have a future as an electrician or not? A lot of things were going on in the background of the build, with both of us working in healthcare amidst the ever-changing, stressful circumstances of the pandemic. We experienced issues and delays acquiring supplies for the build. We're still waiting on our flooring, so that's a little bit of a setback. Vehicle breakdowns, snowstorms, and the anxiety of keeping our new sailboat afloat. You're a champ. She drove up off to work. We felt pulled in all directions and pretty overwhelmed. And we weren't sleeping or eating very well. James has been pretty rapidly losing weight throughout this project. It's the stress. <laughs> all the... My pants keep falling down. Physical labor, the heavy lifting. With less than 48 hours left before we had to pack up our tiny home construction site and move our home on wheels to its new resting place, Let's get it done, let's crack these drawers out, get the propane finished, finish the electrical, install the counters, attach all the appliances, repaint everything, put the toilet in, ground the electrical, and move our stuff out of our old place and into a new place. Oh, and get tires on this thing oh, and yeah. move it. It's go time, baby. <laughs> Wish us luck. Let's go. Looking sharp. And we gotta hit the road in like two hours. No time to film really. Our ride is here and we are moving this to its new home. So wish us luck, hopefully it makes it.
Thanks for being here and supporting our journey. We're excited for the next chapter and the thought of continuing to make videos. If you're interested to support our continued video production, please consider subscribing. You can also check out our Patreon page, which we'll link in the description below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all next week.